kicking off the next build here on Angelo's workbench, the Alpha Models Ferrari SF90 Spider. Stick around. Hey everybody, it's Angelo with Angelo's Workbench. Here with my next project, the Ferrari SF90 Spider from Alpha Models. So we're going to take a look at this. Uh, Alpha Model sent me this to uh, to share with you. We've got a nice little side view of the car there. The box art is very interesting. I've done some Googling and the SF90 Spider I have found, uh, which is a Ferrari that sells for $575,000. Um, this is actually a plug-in hybrid that is really, really fast. I think the top speed I read was 211 miles an hour and a 0 to 60 time of 2.5 seconds. Um, so this thing in real life uh, can move out. Um, so uh, so we're just going to take a quick look here. Here is a... Um, the instructions are uh, rather unconventional for, uh, for a model. They... Um, they tend to build in assemblies, it appears, uh, not like steps, like a model car. So here is the uh, parts inventory. So you can inventory that you, in fact, have all of the parts, which I will be doing. And then besides the resin parts uh, and the four tires there, um, there are also some clear parts down here. And then there also is photo etched metal here. Uh, several decal sheets, the car windows, some metal emblems. I don't know what that is, some type of decal maybe. And then there are four screws, actually. So there's all of the, everything that comes in the kit um, that you can see there. And then on the reverse side of this page, we have, let's see here, we have the dash and interior and interior tub assembly here. This seems to be kind of in order because you would have to do all of this before you did this so that seems to be kind of in order that page and then this page has what i would appear what appears to be some final assembly steps installing the glass and uh and there are photo etched wipers on this my last build i talked about uh how i've never done photo etched wipers well apparently that is about to end because I've got photo etched wipers now for this Ferrari. That's going to be really cool. Um, talks about the interior seats here. I don't know what that is about, but I will figure it out. And then the reverse side of this page uh, shows the base plate going onto the onto the body and getting screwed down with the four screws. It also shows the wheel and tires and brakes, which look exceptional. Look at these photo etched metal parts. This is going to build up into a very realistic looking model. And then metal emblems for the uh, for the back of the car. Pretty wild. Ooh, let's get to the parts. Let's look at what the parts look like. So, first things first, we're going to take a look at this body, which is exceptionally well protected. This is like nesting dolls. It's in a bag, which is in a bag, which is in a bag. Ooh, wow. Okay, that's that's pretty nice. Wow. Oh, it's it is so smooth. Look at that. So what do we have here? We have several pieces here. We have the resin underside. What else do we have here? We have the interior. This is a serious hunk of resin like i wish you could feel the the heft of this it's like it is heavy and the interior fits in just like that i mean wow that is some tight manufacturing tolerances and it just fits perfectly i mean wow okay that's pretty cool it's very cool actually and then the bottom plate just kind of goes on there and, uh, oh, I have it upside down. Duh. There we go. And the bottom plate just kind of goes on there, and that's, uh, that's cool. Wow. That looks amazing. 
And so what else do we have here? Oh, here we have all of the clear parts, um, which look very nicely made. Sometimes these resin clear parts are a little hokey. This is, that's, that's good stuff right there. That looks fantastic. We'll put that aside. And what do we got here? Oh, we have, we have two wheel and tire options. How do you like that? We got a couple different wheels with this kit. All in little Ziploc bags, which is kind of cool. Look at that wheel. Wow, I think that's the one I'm going to use. That's cool looking. And if I'm not mistaken, that might be the one from the box art. Let's take a look. Is that the one from the box art? Yes, that's the one from the box art. Very cool. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm liking that wheel. I mean, I like them both, actually, but that wheel looks pretty sweet. All right, well, we'll reseal that Ziploc bag. Put that aside. And then what do we have here? We have some underside parts. We have some door panels. I see some door panels in here. Um, and the dashboard. The dashboard is in there, too. Wow, look at that. That is cool. Oh, and lots of little parts. Oh, I see brake calipers. Let's take a look at those brake calipers. I want to see how well detailed they are. And they're on like a little piece of sprue. Ooh. Wow. That brake caliper is excellently detailed. That is pretty good. Let me see. Can you see that? There it is. Wow. Yeah, I'm a fan. And then we have here. Wow, this is just tossed in the bag like this. Hmm. This appears to be the top of the engine. Ready for painting and detailing. And what else do we have here? Are these the heads? Let's see. Oh, wow. Look at all the intricate detail on the heads. Wow. And we got a couple of seats in here. They look great. We have, uh, it looks like the seats are molded in multiple pieces. So you can do the different color inserts. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, definitely multiple seat pieces. Multiple piece seats. Huh. Very interesting. Oh, this is going to be a fun build. And we have some more, it looks like some more seat pieces. And the wheel mounts, the steering wheel, all kinds of little parts. And then the um, the brake rotors are here in photo in uh, in resin, and then they they get photo etched metal pieces as well. Um, wow, this is uh, this is amazing, amazing kit. And then we've got some wire spark plug wires. There we go, spark plug wires, as well as um, more little pieces. So there those are. And then what have we got down here? We have more. But wait, there's more. Um, wow. Look at all the photo etch metal. There is a ton of photo etch metal. Oh, and there's the windows. And clear plastic flat sheet. So that'll be an interesting install. And then we have all kinds of, all kinds of photo etched metal. For the brake rotors, and I assume some type of display sign. And then we have the uh, photo etched, actually, I don't know what those are. Some grills, some brake caliper covers. Wow. And this is all, this all appears to be the peel and stick photo etch. So this is the good stuff because I don't see any, there's no mounting little metal pieces that hold it to the sprue. I don't see, or maybe I do see. Yeah, I do see some of that. But it's so well made, this photo etch, it looks like it'll just come right off very easily. And then we have some emblems here, seatbelts. Wow, this is, and it just keeps going. Here's more photo etch. Here's some metal transfer emblems for the prancing horse and the uh, mirrors. And then there's the glass. Wow, fantastic. That is, uh, I am thoroughly impressed at the quality of this stuff. 
Our Chinese friends have been uh, are building some fantastic model kits here. This looks uh, this looks amazing, absolutely amazing. And then here's the four screws that hold it together. And then what have we here? Decals. Uh, lots of carbon fiber decals. Great. Lots of carbon fiber decals. And then what do we have here? We have more decals. But wait, there's more. More carbon fiber decals. As well as some emblems, some lights, some more lights, license plates. They look to be very well made, these decals. Nice decal sheets. Two big, huge decal sheets. And that's everything that's in the box. Um, impressive. Very impressive. Um, we're going to have a lot of work to do in preparing these parts. But more, more uh, interestingly will be for me, um, building a model kit that is a completely a completely different organizational like the instructions are organized completely differently so this build is going to be organizationally a completely different build for me um i'm going to have to maybe develop uh, some new ideas about how i'm going to do things and uh so that's that that's the alpha models ferrari sf90 spider let's get to work so some differences that I'm noticing right off the bat between this and regular model kits is uh, the lack of, I mean, there are sprues, but there's not sprues for everything. So many parts aren't on sprues, and the only parts that are on sprues are very, very tiny parts. So while I am normally one to remove all of the parts from the sprues before paint, I am going to paint these on the sprue because I think that these parts are too small. And I think it will be troublesome. So I'm going to paint all of these on the sprue. And then when I remove them from the sprue, I'll do touch-up before they get applied. Um, I'm also going to build this, I think, in assemblies. I'm not going to go through and paint all the parts of the kit and then start assembly. We're going to do a little bit at a time because there's a lot of unfamiliarity for me here with this. But I have gone through... And I have made sure that everything is here. And in fact, every single little part is here. And it is all now in this bin or in this vicinity. So the, uh, the side view mirrors here. So far, the only thing that I've found that is going to be body color is the actual body and the side view mirrors. And the side view mirrors, like, they're, it's really slick how they do this. They, um, they have them pinned for you from the... Uh, from the manufacturer and you just you know pin it and stick it in there and there it is um the pin is a little uh a little bit long um so i'll shorten that pin up just a little bit but the hole is the hole is perfect and and that's pretty sweet um the panel lines look a little bit shallow i'm gonna scribe them a little bit um and then this is obviously resin this is not styrene so you've got to clean this um the thing that everybody uses online is bleach white. Clean it in bleach white. Degrease it. I, I believe Purple Power degreaser also works, but this needs to be cleaned um, thoroughly before uh, before we go to primer um, because it is resin. Also, because a lot of these parts are resin, for model glue, you know, we'll be breaking out the crazy glue because model glue does not work on resin because model glue works by melting the plastic, and obviously this is not polystyrene. So it's going to, all of these parts are going to have to be crazy glued together. And these seats are incredible. These are like four piece, six, five piece seats. So the opportunity to paint them all different colors or have different shades, varying shades like Alicantra, leather, uh, carbon fiber, whatever, um, is going to be uh, very easy because there's so many pieces. And all of the parts are absolutely beautifully detailed. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed with uh, with the quality of these parts and the detail on the resin. I mean, look at that little resin steering wheel there. Like that's pretty. That's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. So this is going to be fun, um, but it's going to be a little different from what I normally do as far as my own building procedures. So it's going to take me a little bit longer to put this together. So, but that's okay. This is fun. I'm having a good time so far. 
Um, so I'm going to start by preparing this body. We're going to scribe these lines and we're going to get that ready for paint. We're going to uh, paint these side view mirrors. The rest of the kit is going to just chill out until I get to it unless I find something else in here that needs to be body color. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research online, start Googling some Ferrari SF90 picks. This is a pretty hot car. I'm sure there's no shortage of online resources because they do not give you color coding. There's some, there's some ideas of some color coding here, I think. Or is that more just identifying a resin part versus a PE part? That's probably what it is. Um, so it'll tell you like what's resin, what's PE, and that's great. That'll help. Um, but there's no, there's nothing in the way of color call outs, what color things are supposed to be. So I'm going to need to do some extensive online research, but, uh, let's get to it. So while prepping the body, I discovered one thing so far. This part is shown. This is part resin. Let's see here. This is part R14, right? Resin 14. And it shows it kind of just going on to the interior, right? Just kind of like this. And, and, and while that is kind of where it ends up, that is not how it goes. This goes in the body like this. And then this has to go into the body like this. It comes in from the outside. It does not go in from the chassis. It won't work that way because there's a lip here. It goes at an angle. So that has to go in after, not as these instructions describe. However, it is not body color based on my research. Based on my research, it is going to be a semi-gloss black um, because this will all be a semi-gloss black, this little part right here based on my photo research, which there does seem to be a lot of variety in these cars. Um, I'm finding examples online where the side view mirrors are all black. I'm finding examples where they're all carbon fiber. I'm finding examples where they are body color. So, or a mix of body color. I saw one where it was half body color and half black. So I think um, I'm gonna do some research on this car and, and, and look at like, you know, certain things that are black and certain things that aren't. But for the most part, I think I'm just going to go with whatever paint and stuff, whatever color I feel like painting it. Um, because I'm not going to spend my life doing research on this model. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to do a little bit of research, make sure it's somewhat accurate, get a feel for online, the, the varieties in this particular model. I also have a build guide that they provided me with um, that I think is, I don't know if this is extra or they give this with every kit, but they sent it to me. Um, and basically there is, uh, some stuff about what to paint and applying carbon fiber decals, which there are a lot of carbon fiber decals. Um, and then it gives you some, uh, some websites to go to, some finished pictures. And again, I don't know if they're given this with every kit or just, they sent it to me because they sent me the kits to build. They also sent me a build guide for a kit that they did not send me. Um, so I don't, I don't have this kit. The other kit I have is a Mitsubishi Lancer wagon rally art, which I will be doing. But, um, the, uh, so this part I wanted to point out to you, um, doesn't mount the way the instructions quite say, and I'm going to have to keep an eye out for things like that as I go through, especially when I reach assembly. Um, I've seen some videos online where a lot of people say that the doors, can't be attached to the um, chassis, uh, to the interior before you put them in. The doors actually attach to here. And then when you slide this in, it kind of lines up, um, which should be very interesting to see how that works. Um, but uh, so we're gonna get back to work on the body. I'm gonna confirm that there are in fact no other parts that need to be body color. I don't think there are. Uh, and then I'm going to make a decision as to what I'm going to do these side view mirrors in, and we're going to get to work. So I am now scribing the panel lines. I have my Tamiya scriber out with a 0 0.3 blade. And I have just finished scribing the hood. And now I am going to scribe these little 
lines where the front bumper matches up. This is very delicate, very fine work. You need to take your time, don't push too hard. Or you're going to jump out of the line and go down the body. Resin seems to be statically charged. Every single particle I'm taking off this is sticking to me. <laughs> so I am covered in this stuff. And this stuff is no good for you. So when you're sanding it, wear a mask. But since I'm just scribing pieces... And look at how nice and deep that line is getting now, whereas before it was just faint, like it didn't even exist. And that's that. That looks good. Very good. Very, very good. So now we got to do the other side. See what I started with is like it's invisible. Like it doesn't even exist. Especially the first couple of runs while the line is still shallow. You got to go real light, real easy. While you establish, let your scriber establish the line. What's even harder is scribing lines that aren't there using like a metal straight edge or a piece of tape if you're scribing a line that's not there. Um, that's really difficult. The first couple of passes have to be very light. In case you make a mistake, they're easier to sand. And there, I think I've got that nice and deep now. So that'll take a wash later on. And there we go. <coughs> I've got another line right here that needs to be scribed. Get this out of the way since it's nice and straight. There we go. Nice, smooth, controlled. I have another scriber that I like to use sometimes, which is also made by Tamaya, plastic scriber. But um, this one seems to do a better job, at least for me the way I scribe panel lines. And there you see that line is really starting to show up. There you go. So now we have a very pronounced line there which is what is supposed to be because it is a body line on the actual car. The nice thing about the resin is I'm working with a solid chunk, a very big solid chunk. So you don't have to worry about scribing too deeply, um, going through the plastic body and then having issues. Um, this is a big solid chunk of resin, so I can go pretty deep, have a very pronounced line, and not worry about coming through the other side. So, so I'm going to continue scribing some more of these lines, and uh, we'll come back. I have just completed taking the body through a couple of baths. First, a bleach white scrub down with a scrub brush. I'm trying to just hold it by the inside. Um using bleach white to get the resin chemical out and then a thorough cleaning oh there's a nice little grab handle right there and then a thorough cleaning in um dawn dishwashing detergent you can see my panel lines are nice and deep now they have been scribed um so this is ready for primer uh, the first thing that i'm going to do is it is still a little damp in the nooks and crannies so I'm going to pop it into the dehydrator for a little minute, let that all dry out, and then we'll go to the spray booth and get this thing in primer. I'm also giving the airbrush a thorough disassembly and cleaning uh, to ensure that there's no junk in the airbrush. Um, and, and sure enough, when I, took the, when I took the needle out to wipe the needle down, um, oh, I've already thrown that paper towel away. But, uh, oh no, there it is. Look at all the stuff that was on my needle. Um, so all of that is stuff that can come loose 
while you're spraying your paint job. So when I'm doing my paint jobs on my cars, before I do my primer, my base coat, my clear coat, I like to give my airbrush a thorough clean. And a lot of times, because it only takes, you know, 15 minutes to disassemble it, clean it all out really nice um, and put it all back together again. And then it sprays better. But also, I will sometimes clean it again before I shoot the clear coat. Uh, because as you're building up layers inside this nozzle, and I talk about this in my airbrush cleaning video that you can see here on my channel. I did a video on how to clean the airbrush, and I talk about it. As you're building up layers of stuff inside the nozzle, you're reducing the volume of paint that can go out through the airbrush. And so what you're effectively doing is creating a smaller size needle. So if you're trying to wet out your coat of clear so you can have a nice smooth clear coat, a dirty airbrush might not allow you to, even though your air pressure settings are properly in, uh, set and you've mixed the material appropriately, you could still not be able to wet out that coat of clear and then have to do a lot of unnecessary wet sanding and polishing. So I'm giving the airbrush a thorough clean and then we're going to the spray booth. Okay, it is time to prime. So I am using my Steinol Res my go-to primer in white because I think I'm going to do this in red I'm pretty sure so right now I'm just going to kind of go around and get the bottom and the edges put a little bit of primer on there and the edges all around a little bit I'm thinking of red as of right now I haven't made a full decision yet, but even if I don't do red, it will be a bright color. Um, the yellow is always a close second with me. I uh, I really like the yellow. I forget what they call it. Giallo Modena, maybe? And then a red, I think it's Rosso Corso or something along those lines. They get a little primer on and those panel lines really start to pop that I, that I scribed a little deeper. And again, I'm going very light with this coat. You don't want to wet out your first coat of primer. It just needs to be essence of primer. And then I want to let it cure. all these bottom edges. Make sure I get those. There we go. And we've got a pretty good uh, pretty good coat there. So I'm gonna give this front just a little bit of a little bit more. There we go. And I see it's starting to creep up a little on the stand. It's uh, a flat surface on the inside, so it doesn't have a really good, I'm just gonna kind of push down on that edge there, keep that on the stand so that it doesn't come off. So there is uh, coat number one. We're gonna let that uh, cure, dry for a little while. Then we'll come in with coat number two, which will be slightly heavier, slightly wetter, um, and we'll start to get some, some better coverage. Um, I'm thinking three coats of primer on this car, and then it'll be ready for a, um, a, a sand, not a wet sand, a dry sand, because this is a water-based uh, primer. So, so it'll be a dry sand, uh, and, then, um, and then if I go through any spots, I'll have to do a couple more coats of primer and so on. I'll repeat the process until I get to a point where when I do the dry sand, I don't reveal any spots. And then, uh, and then dry sand would probably be 600 grit, 800 grit, 1000 grit, something like that. Uh, and then it'll be time for color. Then we'll have to make our final decision as to whether it's red or yellow um, and go from there. So, uh, so there's that coat of primer. We're gonna let that cure. We'll come back for coat number two. And here we go with coat number two. A little heavier. A little wetter than coat number one.
but not totally soaking. Probably do a coat number three because I need to get in some of those nooks and crannies and detail areas that I haven't got yet. There's a lot of recesses on this car that need to be gotten. So I will decrease the air pressure and move in closer. But we'll let that cure first. Oh, there's a spot right there I see I missed that I can go in and just get. back very little on the uh, shooting mostly air at this point. Going back very little on the trigger. So we'll let that cure and we will come back. It's looking, uh, it's looking pretty good, pretty smooth, and pretty primed. All right. Okay, last coat of primer. There's a couple of nooks and crannies that I gotta get into a little here. Pulling back on the trigger very lightly. Primer in those nooks and crannies. And then up here around these, uh, this hood has some significant definition to it. dry sanding is just going to consist of some very, very little sanding. I'm basically just looking to uh, make sure that there is um, no texture to it, that it is smooth. And so I don't want to, uh, if I have just a very thin coat of primer on there, the second I go to sand on it, I'm going to go right through the primer, back to the resin, and then have to do another coat of primer. So by doing a few coats of primer, I'm ensuring that the uh, primer can take a dry sand a little bit, just a little bit, and not necessarily wear through it. There we go, we're just about set here. That looks good. That's a nice full coat of primer. I like this resin body. This resin body is beautiful. That looks good. The only thing we need to do is let this cure fully. 
let that cure fully. And then we'll go back and we'll do a little dry sand. Thank you for joining me for video number one in the Alpha Models Ferrari SF90 Spider video series. Go ahead and click that like, share, comment, subscribe. All those things help me out. Thank you so very much. Also, check me out on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. All is Angelo's workbench. I look forward to seeing you for video number two next week.